Welcome to Konoha Crush, a clandestine effort to exhaustively research and document events occurring in and around the village hidden in the leaves. I'm Ruby. I'm Gwen. Hey Gwen, we're here. We're here again. It's a, it's another. Yeah, we're recording. Recording the podcast. We're, uh, we're going to talk about Naruto. Yeah, we are. We're going to talk. Do do we have other stuff before we talk about Naruto that we want to talk about this week? Um, I've been kind of busy this week because I started streaming. You started streaming like all the time. Yeah, it's fucked. It's fucked up. I didn't see you post about streaming today, but I might have just missed it. Uh, no, I didn't stream today because I was like, you know, I was in get ready for podcast mode. Yeah, I, I feel like I don't have a ton to talk about either. Like, I've been watching anime still, but I, it's just kind of in that passive way where I haven't developed like a a, a, a substantial thing to say about anything I've been watching yet. You know, like I'm still watching Birdie Wing. I think it's delightful that the uh, the answer for arrival to like the street golfer is like here is the golf princess who is created by fusing these two prestigious golf bloodlines <laughs> in like a ridiculous act of golf eugenics but like yeah. yeah but her real talent is that she just fucking loves golf and likes to have fun playing golf it's so good it's beautiful it's just it's perfectly distilled sports anime bullshit and that's delightful um i i've been watching uh, your boy kong ming which is about what if a uh, Romans of the Three Kingdoms character was reincarnated in modern day Japan and decided to do tactics and stratagems in like clubs and uh, at like music events to like help a girl's singing career launch? And that's a delightful show. But again, I don't have a ton of substantial say about it. It's just it's just really fun. Yeah, I, I, I heard about that. I haven't I haven't checked it out yet. I, I was like worried I wouldn't know quite enough about Three Kingdoms stuff to to get through it because I haven't read Romans of the Three Kingdoms. I've just played a lot of Dynasty Warriors, but like my Dynasty Warriors <laughs> knowledge is like carrying me through pretty well so far. All right, cool. I don't know if you have any Dynasty Warriors knowledge, so you might just be out of luck. But I, I, I think some I've heard some people are just watching without even having that much experience and having a good time. So, mm-hmm. uh, no, no Dynasty Warriors knowledge. I do know a lot about Hyrule Warriors, but that's okay. That's that's not really applicable. I don't think does it, does anybody do like a Stone Sentinel ways in in Hyrule Warriors? Um, probably not. No, L- Lubu is not in there. Nah. I don't actually remember if they mentioned Lubu on the show substantially or not, but he's just like a Dynasty Warriors pull. I don't know. I, mean, I don't have time to say about anime that isn't Naruto this week, um, so I can we can just get into Naruto pretty quickly if we wanna. Yeah. All right. Let me let me start reading the uh, let me start reading the thing. Episode forty five: Surprise Attack. Naruto's secret weapon. After standing up and redeclaring his intent to become the Hokage, Naruto is rushed by Kiba and Akamaru getting caught in another smokescreen. He's taking a beating and struggling to come up with a counterplay when he realizes he can't tell which one is the real Kiba, and transforms. With the third Kiba in the ring now, the real one outs himself and approaches the transformed Naruto. He tells Naruto that his nose is super sensitive on account of dog powers, and he can tell just by smell who's who, and decks him. Naruto hits the ground hard, and in a puff of smoke, transforms into Akamaru. This throws Kiba off, Thinking he just decked his puppy, he turns and lashes out at the real Akamaru, decking his puppy for real. Naruto takes the opportunity to run up and kick Kiba in the jaw. Kiba bites himself to calm his nerves, and Naruto announces his intent to use a special move he's been saving up. Alright, so yeah, this fight is still going. Yeah. Looks pretty rough this episode. This episode, on a whole, just looks unattended to. It's it's like a combination of, like, okay, a lot of the line work looks kind of off, and also, like... There's just a really awkward sense of visual continuity between shots a lot of the time. Like, it starts off with, like, Kiba doing Fang over Fang, and Naruto, like, dodges it by jumping over it, and, like, so in one shot he's, like, floating over it, and then the next shot he's, like, beneath the continuous boy tubes that, like, Kiba and Akamaru turn into. And then the shot after that he's, like, in the middle of it somehow, and it just, like, that's just kind of, like, how the action in this episode starts, and it really sets a tone for it. There's also a real sense of, like... There definitely feels like a disconnect between the people drawing the guys and the people drawing the backgrounds where like the the very clear perspective of the uh, like uniform tiles on the ground makes everything look very awkward a lot of the time. And so we, we get a whole lot of shots of guys just looking really small. Yeah. There's there's like one particular scene like in, in like the second half of the episode, but I, I'm just going to talk about like the, the way that looks in general as a whole right now. 
where you've mm-hmm. got Kiba like running across the room towards Naruto in one cut and like getting right towards Naruto, and then we like cut to like a reverse shot where he is again very far away from Naruto and looks like twice as fucked up running towards him. <laughs> It's, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of a rough one here, which is, you know, I mean, this episode is just rough all around. Yeah. Like, I, I guess, I mean, I, I, I don't know that this might deserve much better. I don't think it's a particularly great file on the whole, but like, no, no, I can see this being the one where you choose to cut corners maybe, but the, the corners have definitely been cut and it, it definitely like, you can, you can definitely see the, the lack of cohesion coming through basically all the way throughout this whole episode. No, I mean, it's, it's, that is what it is, I guess. That is just how anime production goes. Sometimes some episodes just need to get, like, thrown under the bus for the, uh, yeah, you gotta, like, production, but. You, you gotta, you gotta save resources and, like, really pile stuff in on the, uh, on the episodes you, you want to look really, really nice. And, like, we got a couple of those coming up, so, like, get excited. Yeah, get, get pumped. Yeah, I guess just the actual, ep- like, events of this episode, I don't have a ton to talk about until Naruto does his, like, trick of like turning into a guy that looks like kiba i think this is pre- or I, I don't want to say a guy who looks like kiba he just turns into like a kiba you know he's not like a... <laughs> you know you know what i mean though right he's not like roughly kiba <laughs> approximately kiba <laughs> so i guess in this episode all three kibas look roughly like kiba <laughs> Which is like I, I think this is probably like the the most fun part of the fight because it's like where Naruto is using his fairly limited uh, skill set in like a fun and clever way. I think it's very fun that everybody watching is like, all right, now Naruto can do a surprise attack, and Naruto's trick is to just get decked in the face. Yeah, right. Because he was found out immediately. Like, what else do you do? But also, I feel like you know, tricking Kiba into punching his dog in the face is probably like more effective than whatever surprise attack Naruto had on board. Oh yeah. That works out pretty well for him. I also like when um when Naruto is declaiming is is declaring that it's time to use his his secret technique. Rock Lee is just so ready to be excited for him. Like he's really come around on this dumbass kid. He's really he's really ready to get pumped up for him. And I think that's beautiful. Absolutely, I love it when people love Naruto. Me too. I don't know. Did you have much more to say about the first half of this episode? It's kind of like. A lot, a lot of this episode is kind of light, so I think this is probably going to be the one we talk about the least. But, you know, I'm ready to go move on to the, the second half of it, if you are. I don't have anything to say about this half, but I don't want to move on to the next half. <laughs> well, but we have to. This is the job. Okay. Kiba rushes him, trying to overwhelm Naruto and not let him gather his chakra. It's working. Naruto takes a hit in order to throw Kiba and give himself some space, but it doesn't earn him much ground. After a few more hits, Naruto is shaking and having difficulty standing, but he's still standing. Kiba rushes him again, ducking behind him to take him down when Naruto farts, overwhelming Kiba's nose and giving himself enough time to pull off the special attack he's dubbed Naruto's Barrage, in which he vaults off the back of one of his clones as a handful of others kick Kiba into the air, landing a downward heel kick on Kiba's skull as they drop, clearly aping Sasuke's attack. Kiba's knocked out, so Naruto gets the win. Back to the stands, with the help of Kurenai, Hinata gives Naruto the medicine she wanted to give him earlier. Neji's watching the encounter and can't help but hate her ass for some reason. Alright, there we go. There we go. He got the summary out of the way. Yep. So th- this is the uh, the half of the episode that I feel like they expanded the most. I think throughout this arc we've talked a bunch about like what what various approaches they've taken to like drawing out fights to varying degrees of quality. Um, mm-hmm. I think it's pretty weak here because we just have a lot of this episode where... Kiba is just running at Naruto and hitting Naruto, and, like, we get two additional bits of, like, oh, everybody thinks Naruto's knocked down, but then he stands back up, and I feel like you've you've already hit your quota for the amount of times you can pull that off, like, yeah. you, like in the previous episode. Like, you might have surpassed it in the previous episode already, but we, we just get it twice more, and it's, like... It's it's hard to feel much about. We get cuts to people in the stands being like, "Damn, if I was Kiba, I would be sick of this shit." Like people are just kind of tired of the fight happening, which isn't like. I mean, that's not like an energy you want to bring into a fight you're supposed to like watching. No, it's not. But yeah, so we just we just get like the, an extremely uh, protracted build up to uh, you know Naruto's big moment of turning the fight around, which was when he uh, farts in Kiba's face, and it's really funny, and we all laugh. And um... I don't like this episode. It's not great. It's not like, <laughs> and I I don't like that. Like the 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 Naruto barrage thing is like 
it's cool. It's cool that he saw that attack and made it his own, right? Like, yeah, and it's cool that he is like learning to apply like what he has to like pull things off in like a way that's unique to him. Yeah, and I think it's like really fun that like when Sasuke is stealing Rock Lee's techniques, Rock Lee's like kind of worried about it. But when Naruto is stealing from Sasuke, stealing from Rock Lee's attacks, Rock Lee is like back around to be excited about it again. Yeah, it's really good. But like, yeah, I don't know. It's like it doesn't. It's it's hard to get that pumped up about like this is a cool moment for Naruto or as something that like is like dr- it's hard to be dramatically invested in this also because like everybody in the room is like sick of the fight happening and then it just kind of fizzles out with the with the fart yeah. joke and then it's over. It's not a very good fight. It's not a very good fight in a whole except especially the part of it that was in this episode. Yeah, I don't really have anything else to say on the matter. I, I do think it's kind of funny that after Naruto wins, Kurna is like, damn, Kiba, don't feel too bad. We were both wrong about this kid being bullshit. I kind of like Kurna a lot in this episode. Yeah? I, I think it's really funny how she plays wingman for Hinata. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, that is pretty funny. I like that. I like Naruto's extremely like, oh, thanks, Hinata, you're nice, which is like the two words every girl wants to hear, you're nice. <laughs> <laughs> like, probably good enough for Hinata right now, but like... Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, that's how it goes. That's how it goes. They'll get there. They'll get there. And I'll probably care less when they do. But right now, I think it's cute. Oh, yeah. But yeah, I mean, speaking of you nodded, want to get into our next episode? Oh, yeah. All right. Let's get into the real meat of this one, like the, of what we're going to be talking about this recording, because I feel like we might have way more to say about these next two. Episode 46, Byakugan Battle. Hinata grows bold. Hinata goes to give a pot of medicine to Kiba before he's carried off and Kiba warns her to give up if she gets matched with Neji or Gara, and the next match is called. It's Hinata versus Neji. They face up, and we get an introduction to their complicated relationship, where Hinata sees him as an older brother, and Neji hates her ass for being weak, but also a child from the more prestigious branch of the family. The match starts, and Neji tells her to give up, and that she's too weak to be a ninja. Kurenai remembers when Hinata was all but disowned outright after being put in her care by the family head. Hinata is shaken by Neji's harsh words as he goes on to declare that people can't change, and she'll always be a failure. Before we get into the, the, the meat of the episode, another cute, ep- another cute moment with Naruto right at the top. I like when he's like applying the medicine that Hinata gave him, and his wounds are just like steaming and healing up. It's, he's like, wow, Hinata gave me some really awesome medicine. Check this out, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I love that he doesn't know anything. It's beautiful. Yeah. Like, he's never realized that he just heals like that. It's just never occurred to him. I also... So like the, the the matchup comes up on the board, right? It's like it's it's, it's Neji versus Hinata, and like everybody in the room has the sense that this is a terrible idea, right? Uh huh. Except the Thorakage is like, damn, this is gonna be good. So like, they definitely don't have a computer randomizing the matchups, right? There's just a guy <laughs> back there. Just a guy being like, all right, what's some dramatic shit? <laughs> like here's it's like okay, we can't have like a good Huga and a weak Huga in like the finals, so we're gonna get rid of one of them. And uh, let's let's just do this in the most dramatic way possible. Oh yeah, he's just gonna if I can sit down, pull up his pull, up, pull out his popcorn. He's gonna find out how real eugenics are. <laughs> it's it's unbelievable. The man is a freak. I think. Yeah. Okay, we, we we get like a we get like a bit of an overview of what's up with the the main clan and the branch clan or the main family and the branch family, the Hugo clan, right? And. Um, Mm-hmm. They, they, they just talk about how, like, oh yeah, the, the main family gets like all sorts of like preferential treatment in terms of like passing down techniques and everything. And uh, no, nobody in this room is like really uh, that equipped to like unpack how fu- like the, the the ways in which this is fucked. So everybody's like, huh? So this is like a destined battle or something? Like every, everybody's kind of like, <laughs> like no, no, nobody's really like co- co- uh, connecting directly to the idea of like the way the ways in which this is a problem. It's just like. Um, Wow, that's neat. I'm glad they're fighting. It's like, yeah, I guess they gotta fight, huh? Like, I guess it's had to happen eventually. That's, uh... <laughs> yeah, I mean, they got that fucking shinobi brain poison. They've all got the shinobi brain poison so bad in here. Yeah, we, we cut down to, like, the fight starting itself, right? And Neji is doing his, um... And Neji starts off like, yeah, before we fight, I've got one thing to say to you. And then he just spends the next, like, eight minutes of the episode laying into Hinata because he's a huge prick. And then she's like, just, then she is such a little shithead right now. It's like, like I think it works, but like, man, that, this kid sucks. <laughs> I love how much Neji sucks here. It's great. It's great, like, cause he's like, 
Like, I, I think the thing that really works about the way that Neji sucks in these episodes mm-hmm. is that if you're coming to Naruto as, like, anything other than, like, a sort of self-absorbed teen, it's, like, instantly obvious how much, like, Neji has, like, a like, a self-absorbed, like, pretty contrary, like, like not, not internally consistent belief system that you, you arrive at when you're, like, kind of a miserable teen. Yeah. Because, you know, he's, like, really, it's, like, founded in this, like disdain for the main family and like this idea for like of like yeah you know every, everybody's just sort of like pre- predestined where there are and if you if you and nobody ever changes and uh and it's like there's there's not really like there there is more work put into not thinking about the like ways in which he's just kind of like reifying the shit that the main family does and the ways in which he's like not really like um addressing his base concerns with uh with like the, the the way he is like evaluated within the broader broader view, kind of like he's putting more effort into not thinking about any of that stuff, and he isn't actually like resolving those feelings. It's just like it's it's just a bunch of like ill-conceived, mean teen bullshit, and it like really works as, as like setting the dramatic stakes for the fight because it's like yeah, it's not like a super coherent ideology that he has, but it's like a very believable character thing. Um, yeah, he's like very believably a shithead right now. It's great, you know, and, like, I, I, I think it's cool for, like, the heel in this fucking anime fight to to, to just be, like, a fucking overdramatic teen shithead mm-hmm. bullying his traumatized cousin. Yeah, yeah, right, like, it's, like, it's the sort of thing, like, when, when I was watching the show as a teen, it's very easy to go, like, ah, oh, this is, like, a, a, co- a conflict of ideals between, like, Naruto and Neji, and it's, like, now Neji doesn't really have, like, a super grounded, like belief system like he would probably draw to this eventually uh, like it, it, if somebody else kicked his ass later but like yeah like he just needs one ass kick <laughs> it's it's just like a like, like, like it, it is a thing that coming to it later like it's like this is just like a, a, a personal conflict and like a, a like a th- this guy is away as a result of his circumstances and he needs to like move past that more than like a you know like a serious dialogue on whether or not people can change ultimately right like it's just like oh yeah this guy's is a shithead teen um yeah we we also get like a little bit of like a a flashback for hinata we get a picture of how bad hinata's life is um yeah that hinata scene was rough yeah hinata's dad fucking sucks um yeah i am really curious to like give a close eye to stuff with the hugo clan because I feel like there is a point where they just kind of want to treat it as though it's resolved, and I'm every time that every time I get to that point in Naruto, I feel like I'm missing a step, and I'm yeah, they just like got better off screen. Don't worry right, about like, it. But like by the time of Boruto, like the, he not his dad is like this loving, doting grandfather, and right now he's just like the worst man. He's just like the worst dude imaginable. Right. It's it's like 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 literally literally. Oh, I don't have time to talk about Hinata right now. I'm too busy beating up her little sister, who's way better than her in every way. Which is why she gets to be the one I beat up now, and I Hinata. <laughs> yeah. Like, just just a fucking garbage guy. Just just the worst. Um, so I'm like, I'm curious to see if I feel any better about the, the resolution to this whole thing this time. Um, I'm just kind of putting that on the table, because I very much remember not feeling satisfied by it previously. Um, this is also an opportunity for me to put on my hat. What's your hat telling you this time? Or what are you speaking into existence with the power of your hat? <laughs> I really like, I really like it for Karenai's character that she just, like, takes girls and helps them. Mm-hmm. And I think, I know I mentioned it before when we were first introduced to, 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 um, to Karenai, but, like, it would be so cool if she just scouted out all of the women who were, like, being... <laughs> being neglected by their teachers and shit uh-huh. and we're just like okay here's how you do real shit yeah you're you're really like this this could never happen in naruto but this is a beautiful vision right it can never happen in naruto but like she would be such a good teacher to fucking sakura and like also um because right, she's like a genjutsu specialist sakura is like sakura's got like genjutsu knowledge in theory in theory yeah. But, but but also it'd be really sweet if like even if she didn't necessarily have like directly applicable skills, it, it, if she also just was like the kind of person that was like, hey, your 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 teacher is being kind of like, 
It seems like he he seems like he thinks you suck and doesn't really invest anything in your personal growth. You want some help with that? Yeah, like literally. Maybe she's just got her hands full. She can't she can't offer that to to Sakura or anybody else. Yeah, I mean she basically adopted a kid. So <laughs> yeah, like I, I like I guess I'm curious. Like like I I, I I I am sort of wondering. Yeah, like is is she is you know just like staying with her at this point because because she's clearly not that welcome at home. But I can't imagine she wants to be there. Yeah. That'd be like that'd be like really sweet if like Kuro and I was like kind of you not his mom now. Yeah, that would be awesome. Oh man. God, I wish we saw that ever. Like 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 imagine just like Kuro and I's like shitty little like single single lady apartment. Uh-huh. And then having to like suddenly take care of a teen. It's so good. Oh, that's great. Instead Kuro and I's just kinda like be- gonna become mom and sort of wander off screen forever, but like, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's what girls do in Naruto. <sighs> The, the other thing I'm, like, sort of confronting as I watch this half of these ep- this episode is, like, fundamentally, I just, like, really like Hinata as a character. I like Hinata as a character in the way you can only like an anime girl that you, like, projected onto when you were 13, because you're like, wow, I'm also, like, a sad girl who is disappointing my family. <laughs> <laughs> and so, like, every time I'm, like, really bought into the Hinata stuff, I, like, have to wonder, like, how much am I giving this too much credit? Because, like... I do really care, but also I, I I can't help but acknowledge like I Hinata is given so much less room to feel like complicatedly about her situation than Neji is, right? Like she's just kind of like sad and traumatized and nice, and like I I, I am like a person who for a large part of my life you know resp- responded to my own trauma by like becoming like sad and like very outwardly nice to everybody, but like it's not like that's ever a thing that gets complicated with Hinata, and this is this, that's mm-hmm. just kind of the that's just kind of the traits she gets. I mean, she gets less sad later, I suppose. Yeah, and like, do we? We 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 don't have it now, but I'm I don't remember, and I'm curious. Like, do we ever get an extrapolation on like the way that Hinata feels positively towards Neji right now with like the brother thing? Um, there's like because that that implies that Neji's animosity right now is like fairly recent. Mm-hmm. I th- I think there's like some stuff that is like I I don't know if it originates in the an- in in the manga though it might be like from from the anime and also like way later I I'm not sure I guess I'll be I'll be mm-hmm. on the lookout for that but yeah I mean it, it it just really stuck out to me as like a as like kind of a key detail that's just kind of missing from this right. whole yeah because because Hinata clearly cares about Neji in a way that like sh- I I I can't imagine she would if he was just this guy to her for her entire life. Yeah, like absolutely. Yeah, so I guess I'll be looking out for that. Uh, are we are we ready to move on to the rest of the episode? Sure. Neji activates his Byakugan, and Hinata can't even look him in the eyes. He lays into her, talking about how much of her body language suggests she's a powerless little coward. Naruto can't stand this guy and shouts from the stands, demanding Hinata stand up for herself. This snaps her out of it, and she steals herself for a fight against Neji, activating her Byakugan. Neji and Hanada break out into a volley of attacks, each dodging and parrying in perfect sync. Rock Lee and Mike Guy explain the Hyuga's special taijutsu, the gentle fist, that uses the Byakugan to land bursts of chakra that interfere with the body's internal chakra network to damage internal organs. The conversation is put on hold when Hanada and Neji each land a strike to the other's chest. So yeah, we, we, we come back from the like mid-episode commercial break and Neji is just still fucking on this shit. He's still like, he is being so mean for so long. Like, he would just probably keep going for like the entire rest of the episode if Naruto didn't like yell at him. Yeah, he starts like fucking BBC Sherlock. <laughs> no, I was I had the same thing about he's doing like this <laughs> shitty fucking like Sherlock routine, but like exclusively for identifying a girl he already knows is traumatized is traumatized. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, great going, asshole. Yeah, you fucking... And, like, you know that's not an on-the-fly observation. <laughs> you you know he's been thinking about this shit forever. It's like, you, you just know this shit about her. This is like your powers of observation. You just know that this girl is sad and hurt. <laughs> and you're being a dick about it. Yeah. Un- it's unbelievable how much this guy sucks right now. Like, this this is from a later episode, but, like, he, I, like we later on that he gets, like, pissed off at Naruto for, like, interrupting his, like, endless spiel about how bad Hinata is. <laughs> What a little fucking bitch! Oh my god! <laughs> Just a horrid little twerp. It's like so easy to root against him. I'm like, they're they're really nailing that. I feel like, right? God, I yeah, I'm gonna go kick his ass. <laughs> 
Me, me and that little dipshit are gonna go meet behind the alley. <laughs> you could think I could fucking, could fucking last ten seconds against you. I just show him. Maybe it can last ten seconds. I, I, you know, I, I, I feel like you, I feel like you got the advantage. I kind of about being a child. <laughs> yeah, because I'm fucking twenty five. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a big part of it. Yeah, and we know from later that he can't do shit to twenty five year olds. <laughs> Uh, I, I really like Naruto being the guy who doesn't have the decor of like, like, hey, why the fuck is this still going on? Why, why are you saying all this shit? Hey, Hinata, you can't just listen to him say this shit. This sucks. Like, I, I like him being the one guy who's just like, yeah, I'm going to yell about this. This seems awful. Yeah. You know what? If I wasn't hiding in the ceiling right then, mm-hmm. right there with him. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we, like, wait, be, because we are from the, we, we're, we're with Orochuara, so we're the only people who know what spying is, we can't just blow our cover like that, but yeah. like. <laughs> Do you want to talk about the, uh, the way they punch weird? Yeah, it's fucking sick. It's so the gentle cool. fist is, like, cool as hell. Like, I love that they, they start fighting and it's immediately more about, like, just, uh, like, like, yeah, like, oh, it, it is about, like, d- deflecting these, like, kind of soft-seeming blows, and like, you got the, like, the chakra pulsing off of, off of them as they go. It's like, it j- it's just, like, immediately very cool and distinctive. It, like, sells this as, like, a new weird way to fight very... Yeah. Actually, like, I, I, I really like it. I think it's just... It's so cool. It's just really cool. I love when, I love when there's, like, a... I, I love when they, when, like, they tell me that a guy has, like, a particular martial art, martial art style, and then, like, you see it on screen, and it's like, oh, yeah, this is, like, very distinct, and, like... Yeah. What's, what's, what's better than this? Yeah, and, and I like that probably, like, any chuckle fuck could fucking gather some chakra in their hand and let it go in a burst when they're touching somebody. But it's the fact that they have the fucking Byakugan and can see the other person's fucking chakra networks. It's like, I can't make your heart, I don't want to, like, make your heart disintegrate. So, like, that's, that's, that's an advantage I have. It's cool. Yeah. It's so cool. I, I also think the, like... The, the the choice to like end the episode on uh the, the bit where like oh they they they're, like they 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 like both make their blow we don't know who yeah I think I think it's like a really tight like way to like leave us in suspense for next time mm-hmm. and yeah, there, there, there's like not very much like action in like this episode or the next one but like whenever there is it like looks really good and really it looks so good yeah um I, I think two Hugo should fight more often. <laughs> I, I, I believe the like big action sequence of this one is animated by uh, Chiyuki Tanaka, mm-hmm. um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll talk about who who handles stuff in the, in the next episode when we get there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you want to get there? I would, I would. I would love to get there. All right. Episode forty-seven: A failure stands tall. Hinata coughs up blood while Neji seems unaffected, and it's revealed Neji is uniquely talented and able to pinpoint and disable chakra points on the body to disable his opponent's ability to channel chakra meaning Hinata was unable to get a damaging burst of chakra out with her strike. With her unable to do any harm with the gentle fist, Neji throws her to the ground and demands she forfeit, but she stands, saying she refuses to go back on her word. She's hurt bad, but with Naruto cheering on, she charges Neji. Her appreciation of Naruto's drive carries her through an impressive display of taijutsu against Neji. She takes a blow to the chin, and Kurenai reflects on how much this fight has changed her. Hinata rushes Neji again, taking another chakra charge blow to the chest. I talked about the last episode ending like pretty well. I think this episode also opens pretty well because we just have this really prolonged silence before like we get what like the actual resolution of like the of like the the hit. Yeah. Like not a cough up blood and it's like oh fuck, you hate to see it. <laughs> you hate to see the girl you like cough up blood. It's just it's just not what we're rooting for here. Um, a thing I was kind of surprised by is like I forgot that hitting the chakra points was like oh this is a thing that Neji specifically does and not just like oh this is what the hugas do yeah and i guess i'm curious if it's like did i think that because it just kind of gradually filters out to being a thing that all of like the hugas do when they fight or did i think that because neji is like the only guy who gets more fights we'll find out we'll find out (laughs) i do think it's um i do think it's a really cool thing for that one guy in particular to be able to do Mm mm-hmm or it's like oh, uh, this 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 is like an extension of like the the thing that they can all do, but like it's really hard to like be able to do precisely, and so it's like kind of scary that he can pull it off. Yeah, it's like oh okay, that's that's why they let him be like this. I I, I really like that it is like uniquely potent against another Hugo person, right? Mm-hmm. Because if he did that to me, I'd just break his nose still. <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah, and then Neji is like still being the guy here. So like as soon as he has Hinata down on the ground, he's like immediately saying more of his bullshit. God. Uh... He just, he just, he he is he is like fucking planting his heel flag so hard. That's fucking over for him as soon as he and a shown protagonist get in the ring. I tell you what. Yeah, no shit. He's gonna have the most kicked ass. But I think the thing that's interesting here is, is as as Naruto's like watching this, he's like, oh, he not as like he not as like really strong. Wow, and like, and like it, it's Rock Lee who's like, yeah, Naruto, she's a lot, a lot like you. So Naruto is still not at the point where he has like learned to recognize when a person is like him. He has not yet like attained his signature technique. Uh, I'm I'm curious to see what the turning point is here, but uh, yeah, he's, want... st- he's still not quite got that figured out. You know, it's like um, it, it's it's like when you befriend somebody before you both know that you're gay. Mm-hmm. It's like it's like you spot it without knowing you spot it. But Hinata is so fucking cool here. Hinata is so cool, right? Like she gets back up. She's like she's like starting to fight again. On and the, like the action in this episode looks unbelievable. Like it's one of those great cuts where it's like once the fight starts at ha- the action starts happening, like it, the show just immediately looks very different. <laughs> The animation for a lot of the action this episode was provided by uh, Hirofumi Suzuki, who is um, one of the uh, he's again, like one of the uh, the character designers for for the show, who is like a frequent collaborator with Toshi Kisuru, who's going to be around next week uh, for our first episode that we cover then. So he's just he's just pulling double duty here and like just making these like really great looking cuts of like he not is like getting back up and she's like do, doing her best to like fight back against Neji and it's like hell yeah you know like yeah. I'm rooting for her like I. I like, we all know this is a doomed fight at this point. Like, it has been well established that she physically cannot harm him anymore with her technique. Mm-hmm. But she's, like, going for it. And it looks, it like, again, yeah, it looks awesome, right? <laughs> yeah. She's not going out like a fucking chump, I'll tell you that much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's no fucking Dozu. <laughs> Dozu isn't even dead yet. You're already doing him like this. <laughs> Like, I, I think it does a really good job of, like, getting everybody into, the, like, like getting the audience into this state of, like, oh, yeah, like, everybody in this room is, like, is like impressed with Hinata at, by the end of this. Like, maybe not everybody, but, you know, like, a lot of people are. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the people that, like, are familiar enough with her and her situation to, like, see what she's doing. It's so cool. She fucking rules. It's, 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 so cool. it's just, like, it is such a magical thing whenever, like... The, 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 like you're you're like reading like a like a fight comic and like the or watching like a, a show action anime like this right and like you just see like like you you just feel yourself like aligned with all of the, all of the characters in the audience who are like cheer, cheering on a character it's great I, it's great I love it that's what it's all about to me yeah um you ready to move on to the rest of the episode sure Hinata collapses and the match is called before Naruto interrupts as Hinata begins to stand. She's shaky, incapable of channeling chakra, out of breath, and coughing up blood, but she still refuses to give up. Neji rushes her, but Gekko Kakashi, Gai, and Kurenai all move to intercept, stopping him in his tracks. Hinata drops, and Naruto, Sakura, and Lee rush over to see her before she falls unconscious. Neji tries to talk shit to Naruto, so Naruto rushes him, only to be stopped by Rock Lee, saying it's good to stand up for yourself and others, but he needs to save the fighting for an official match. He tells Naruto that he intends to kick Neji's ass himself, but gives Naruto permission to kick his ass for him if they get matched up first. Hinata's hurt bad, and all the drama made the medical staff late to pick her up. They carry her off, saying her life's in danger if they aren't extremely fast. Naruto swears on Hinata's cough blood to win no matter what. Hinata's so fucking cool here. Hinata's so fucking cool. Like, I... The, the the moment of like Naruto like like yelling out to not stop the match is like su- it's such a great moment of like oh maybe there's like something between these two characters because like it's not that Naruto is like being like all right you got to keep fighting because like you know he he knows that this is like hard for her she probably can't win it's like a moment of him being like the one person in the room who is like still like paying it like like watching her closely enough to know that she's trying to stand up again and like choosing to believe in that and to like w- want everybody to acknowledge that and it's like. It's like it's like a really great moment. It's like, <laughs> it's so good. It's like this 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 beautiful thing of like, hey, here's these two kids who like are are like, you know, both desperate for people to acknowledge them in different ways, like cho- choosing to acknowledge each other. And it's like, man, this this could have been something. This could have been everything. And <laughs> Neji is 
like, Benji has been a tool all throughout these episodes. He just really goes fucking overboard in, like, the, the last half of this episode, right? Like, Hinata stands up this one last time, and he's, like, he, he's basically just, like, yeah, I mean, like, you can just go be a fucking nobody and not matter and, like, go suck forever, and that's fine. That's, like, my kindness I'm offering for you, basically. Like, he is being such a fucking freak about this. And, like, the, 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 the thing that sets him off and goes into, like, I'm going to kill my cousin mode is Hinata going, like, you seem like you're really sad, actually. <laughs> yeah, like fucking fighting back tears, sobbing, no, I'm not, and then he runs in to murder somebody. Like, uh, it's, 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 yeah, like, I'm, I'm just, like, so, I'm just so bothered at this point. Like, I'm, I'm like, all, all the, all the Johnny in the room just, like, instantly surrounding him, like, holding him, like, completely in place. And him be like, ah, oh, you, you fucking assholes. This is, this is, like, preferential treatment towards the head family. And it's like, no, man, you're trying to kill your cousin. <laughs> that wouldn't be cool. Yeah. Also, there's a moment here where a guy is like, Neji, before this begin, you swore you would bring your personal issues with the head with the, with the main family into this. And it's like, guy, I don't think you should have taken him for his word on that. <laughs> I, th- I think you, 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 if there's anything you should have counted on, it's that this, like, shithead angry 13-year-old in your care is, like, going to bring his personal issues into this fight. <laughs> because that he brings his personal issues into everything that he does forever. Yeah. God. Like, there's so- there's something about fucking guy and kakashi where they just like extremely overestimate the amount of like self-control the boys in their care have right yeah there's like i guess i'm interested to pay pay attention to this because there's like this real there is like this this real like shared kind of like there's definitely this, this shared potential to like put their students into like these like extremely high pressure situations and just be like yeah you got to be good enough to handle this right and i'm like it, 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 it's interesting I, I hadn't thought about that until you said that but that really is like a, a a shared shortcoming between the two of them i think you know and like i i don't want to say that that's necessarily like never a thing to do mm-hmm. right like obviously you, you know in the in these in this situation you need to like challenge your students or whatever but like i i, I feel like making them pinky promise not to like let let their like trauma get the better of them in a tense situation. Throwing them into is like maybe a little bit steep. Yeah, I think. I mean, yeah, it's like I I guess I I don't know what what he uh I guess I don't know what more he could have done. Be like, hey, try try not to make this too personal. But given that like you know he can't he can't make the the matchup not happen this way. But like he it, it it definitely feels like he's just kind of putting a band aid on a a problem that is too big for a band aid here. Right, like, I don't, I don't think he could have done anything different, but, like, I also don't think the course of action, then, is to, like, turn that on the kid. Be like, hey, you weren't, like, a big enough person as, like, this, like, fucked up, traumatized 13-year-old to, like... Yeah. Yeah, right? I think, I, I think the thing to do there is to be like, okay, hey, cool it, we need to get you out of this situation, we can talk about this later. Yeah, that, that is, like, yeah, that's, like, a, a really interesting parallel between the stuff with Kakashi and Sasuke earlier where like Kakashi on some level kind of knows that like he's he's giving like like if not when he when he like asks that of asks Sasuke to just like stay in control and not want this power that would be helpful for getting revenge like but like if he, if he doesn't know that that's like uh, too much to ask when when he like set when, like tells Sasuke that like by the time he's done talking to Rochimaru he knows that's like that's not something that can really uh be relied on to happen but it is definitely, like, this thing of, like, another moment of, like, okay, I, I, I've put, like, this is a personal responsibility on this kid of this thing that he cannot possibly handle. And it's, uh... Yeah, right. And, like, it, it, it's a similar situation where, like, the, that is how the ceiling jutsu works. Like, there is not, like, another situation Kakashi could have put Sasuke in there. But still, like, framing it around, like, okay, as long as you don't have any personal failings. Yeah, just be, just be good. Just, 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 uh, just hold it together. Yeah, instead of, like, you know, being a figure in his life where he could talk about stuff with. Uh-huh. You know, but it's just the shinobi brain poison. They got the shinobi brain poison. Kakashi is, like, extremely not a guy who has any answers for any of the kids in his care. He's just kind of, you know, like, it, it, it's, like the, it's like the thing at the end of the, the Zabuza arc again, where, like, he they're, like, but where he's just like, yeah, I don't, I don't really know what to do about, like, how we're not supposed to have feelings, but also how we have feelings because we're people. Uh, but just, uh, try not to beat yourself up about it, like... Yeah, just don't think about it, and then die young. I I am, like, really interested in these moments we get of, like, 
oh, none of these people are really, like, emotionally capable for, like, being, like, like having these children in their care. And it's, they're gonna do their best, but it's, it's just gonna be rough out here. Yeah. I want an apprentice or, like, a protege so bad. <laughs> like, I don't want to be a parent. That's a lot of responsibility. But I want, like, a teen. You're like, you're like looking at this and you're like, I could do better. I could! You've got less of the shinobi brain poison, that's for sure. I've got just enough. <laughs> you got the appropriate amount. <laughs> that child would be so, so strong and so mentally well-adjusted for everything. It's true. I'll be like, hey, if you ever have any problems, come and talk to me. But also, like, sometimes it's, like, okay to hurt people. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a bad start, I suppose. Z- zeroing back in on this episode again, there's another, like, unbelievable Neji heel moment where, like, Kurt is giving him this fucking death glare, and he's just like, hey, don't be mad at me. Go fucking care for your student that's dying. <laughs> it's just, like, yeah, just, just wretched. Just a fucking wretched kid. Hey, can we talk about how Hinata's heart was, like, moments away from stopping and she was just, like, standing there with still wanting to fight? Yeah. Hinata's the coolest guy in Naruto. <laughs> Alright, we've got, we've got it. <laughs> I, I also like Rock Lee, like, leaping in here to stop Naruto from fighting because this is another instance of Rock Lee being the guy who is, like, very willing to, like, espouse beliefs that he is not... that he is not consistently capable of, like, holding to his, himself because, like... Just a few episodes ago, after one of his, after, like, Tenten got her ass kicked, he was, like, ready to do this same fucking thing, and he didn't kind of hold him back. <laughs> yeah, like, I feel like Guy had, like, a brief conversation with him, and then he saw that moment, and was like, alright, time to prove I learned my lesson. <laughs> right, and, like, if, if somebody is, like, disrespecting Rock Lee's teammates at, like, a future tutoring exam, like, it might happen again, but, like, <laughs> right now, he's, like, he's showing that he's, uh... Yeah, like, it... It it only happened because it was in his head from, like, four minutes ago when Guy was talking to him. I I think there's, like, an interesting angle to Rock Lee that I don't know if we really dig into that much, but, like, of him as, like, this guy who is, like, very attached to this idea of, like, disciplined and principled fighter guy, but also he's, like, he can't really, like, adhere to that because he's just, like, a goofy teen who, like, cares too much. I think that's really interesting. Yeah, I mean, like, he's absolutely the goofy teen that dresses up like his favorite martial artist. Mm-hmm. And, like, t- talks the talk that he hears the guy talking, but, like, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we, we get, like, also at the end of the episode with, like, Naruto is doing his whole dramatic vow to fight and beat Neji. And it's, like, it really feels like sometimes this arc really wishes it had, like, a bracket to point to to go to, like, next round naruto is going to fight neji because like it's it's really just setting that up but there's like nothing that says that's going to happen other than like the fact that the the audience who is watching this know that that like the show is going to contrive to have that fight happen yeah like like the like the the characters are acting as if this is, is inevitable and there's like nothing in the story that uh that like actually like makes that even all like necessarily all that likely Mm. Uh, other than the fact that, like, we know that when you set up the fight this directly, it has to happen. Yeah. And it's like, they should have just put a bracket in, right? <laughs> yeah, maybe, like, maybe they should have just... Maybe they didn't need to do this, like, random, randomly done matchups thing. I don't know. They could, they could have just, like, scribbled together a bracket and, like, put a few, like, extra spicy ones in there just just for fun. <laughs> like, like you know, Heroes is, like, looking over and is like, all right, yeah, these these seem, like, pretty impartial, but, like, can we can we have the Hugas fight each other? Like, I just, I just want to see what happens. Yeah, it's like, uh, you, you know how sometimes when there's, like, really big brackets, they, like, weight it so that, um, th- things that are too similar, like, never make it to the finals or whatever? Mm-hmm. It, w- it would be cool if it was just, like, literally, like, mentioned as fact that they did that on purpose. Right, like, it's just like, yeah, we, we've, like, largely set this up to, like, get the, get the guys we think are the best into the, into the actual finals, because this is ultimately about putting on a show. Yeah, that would rule. It would be cool as hell. But, uh, but nah. Right, and that makes sense for the, um, that, that, that makes sense for the, uh, Kiba and Naruto fight, too. Mm-hmm. Because they're the same guy. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're the same guy! Yeah, I think uh, that, like, wraps up just about everything I had to say about this episode. Did you have anything else you wanted to touch on? 
No, not really. What are we watching next week? Next week, we are starting off with episode 48, which is uh, arguably the single best remembered episode of Naruto of all time. Mm -hmm. And we're also watching episodes 49 and 50, uh, which will get us the entire uh, fight between Rock Lee and Gaara. So look forward to that. Yeah, look forward to that. And hey, if you don't want to look forward to it, if you want to watch it like right now, did I say watch? You said watch. (laughs) Who fucking cares? If you want to listen to that right now, instead of, you know, next week or whatever, give us some dollars on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Konoha Crush. We put all of the episodes there a week early. So like, you know, it's a big one. It's exciting. Are you hyped? I'm hyped. I'm hyped. Yeah. I've been hyped for this one for like three weeks. Right, yeah, yeah. There, there was like a time where we were like, where like I think it was like after we finished recording, we were, where we realized that like the whole fight was just gonna fall in one episode really cleanly without us having planned for it at all, and it was like, oh fuck yes, fuck yes, can't wait to record that one. So like you know, yeah, um, and you know, besides the Patreon, uh, any images we talk about during the episode can be found on our Twitter at Konoha Crush, all one word. Uh, and I think that's it. Hey, thanks for listening. Later, and remember, there's no such thing as filler.